Wildlife and narcotics trafficking are serious crimes with devastating consequences for Tanzania's natural resources, economy, and security. And one of Tanzania's most visible resources, its elephants, are in danger of being wiped out, victims of poaching for their ivory. When you look at the elephant population in Tanzania in 2009, there were 109,000 elephants uh, here uh, in Tanzania. Five years later, it's down to 43,000. I mean, those numbers are just devastating. And you can easily see a scenario in which uh, there'll be no more elephants in Tanzania. The joint effort between U.S. Customs and Border Protection, the U.S. Department of State, and the Republic of Tanzania arrived at a unique solution to the problem, using animals to protect animals. The ambassador worked in the White House as the deputy chief of staff uh, when President Obama came here three years ago and presented the executive order on wildlife trafficking. The idea for the program was presented to Commissioner Kurlikowski on his trip last year and it snowballed into the great program we have today. In 2015, four Tanzania police officers were specially selected from Tanzania Police's dog and horse unit to travel to the U.S. to train as canine handlers at CBP's world-class canine training facility in El Paso, Texas. This is the first ivory detection program ever created by, by the CBP canine program. Uh, we had to also custom tailor this particular curriculum to meet the needs of our students and then to meet the needs of their operational environments. All four students are going to be working at the seaport and airport operations and these dogs had to be specifically trained to be able to be deployed in those environments. The officers and their detector dogs, four Belgian Malinois, underwent 10 weeks of intensive training learning to work together to detect ivory, narcotics and other banned substances. The Belgian Malinois is a very particular breed that we really like utilizing. Just like in the southwest border, we have a lot of areas with hot weather and really rough terrain. This, this Belgian Malinois has been able to naturally surmount a lot of these obstacles based on their genetic lineage. The 10 weeks were rigorous, but at the end, the Tanzania handlers were certified and returned home, while the canines continued their intensive training at the CBP Canine Center in Front Royal, Virginia. Finally, in February, the four detector dogs, along with two of their CBP Canine Center trainers, journeyed to Tanzania to reunite with their Tanzania handlers. Now it was time for five more weeks of rigorous training together and bonding. In the very environments they will be working in, the seaport at Dar es Salaam, and the cargo facility at Julius Nyeri International Airport. Being out here, we were able to adapt based on what we're seeing as challenges, resources, and adapt and create a four-phase in-country training that would allow us to accomplish the final mission. Finally in March, at the end of the five weeks, the Republic of Tanzania and the U.S. government held a ceremony to recognize the achievement of the four Tanzania officers, the formal reception of the canines into service, but just as importantly, the ability of the two governments to work together to increase Tanzania's capacity to combat poaching and illegal smuggling. I want to re record here that we deeply appreciate the efforts that uh, the United States government is taking to cooperate with our government to ensure the survival of these uh, big populations of wildlife that are still available in the wild. The one thing that we've understood since we've been in country is this is not a one man's fight. This is truly a team effort. There are multiple agencies, multiple entities out there joined together as a team trying to make this, make this work. <laughs>